This video is brought to you by Ground News. Ever since the downfall of Boris Johnson, Keir Starmer's Labour Party have been dominating in the polls. Their lead appears so unassailable that many political commentators have stopped asking if they're going to win in 2024 and instead are asking how large their victory will be. Some have even started asking questions about the ability for the Tory party to survive such a loss, and senior Tories appear to be setting out their stall for leadership, in anticipation of Sunak stepping down following next year's election loss. So at first glance, it seems that Starmer is crushing it, and it would be natural to assume that Starmer is incredibly popular amongst voters in the UK. However, when you dig down, it seems that people just aren't all that enthused by the Labour leader. More people think he's doing badly as Labour leader than well, more people think he's untrustworthy than trustworthy, and more people think he's dislikable than likeable. So in this video we're going to have a look at Labour's polling, Starmer's personal polling, and try to explain how Starmer can be so far ahead in the polls with such mediocre personal polling. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's get started by looking at the Labour Party's polling. Ever since the chaotic Liz Truss Premiership, the Labour Party have been ahead in the 2024 general election polls. In fact, even prior to her Premiership, and during the downfall of the Boris Johnson government, the Labour Party was about 10 points ahead of the Tories. Since Trust, though, this skyrocketed to 30 points and settled back down to about 20 points. On average, this poll lead has actually maintained, with recent polling still putting the Labour Party at around a 20-point lead. Unsurprisingly, Labour are generally well regarded by the public. More people view Labour as more moderate than extreme by a margin of about 2 to 1. More people view it as united rather than divided, and they're now more trusted than the Tories on key issues, including asylum and immigration and taxation. This is significant too, because on these metrics, the Labour Party under Jeremy Corbyn was seen as extreme, divided and untrusted on the economy and asylum and immigration. Back then, Corbyn had just led the party to its largest defeat since 1935. Turning all of this around has undoubtedly helped Labour regain in the general election polling. There are though some limits to the public's praise for the Labour Party. When asked about how trustworthy it is, far more people view it as untrustworthy than trustworthy. More people also see the party as weak rather than strong. Now, these conflicting views of the Labour Party can be confusing. For example, how can the public trust the Labour Party more than the Tories on key issues of the day, while also saying that on the whole they're untrustworthy? The first thing to note here is that interpreting the public's attitude on things is hard, and at times they can hold two contradictory beliefs. This is just our interpretation of the polling. The way we see it, the public view the Labour Party as, on the whole, untrustworthy while also viewing them as more trustworthy than the Tories. Moreover, while the public view the Labour Party as united, they still see the parties unable to affect change, unable to set the agenda, and unable to set policy. Or, to put it simply, weak. Sure, if they do get back into power, the public trusts that the party will be able to affect positive change in key policy areas. But right now, they just don't believe that the party has the power to really do anything. On the whole, this is positive for Labour. The key thing opposition parties aspire to do is to regain power. And while the public don't see the Labour Party as perfect, on the key metrics, trust on the most important policy areas and general election polling, the Labour Party are ahead of their main opponents, the Tories. So let's move on and discuss Keir Starmer specifically. Like the Labour Party itself, the public don't view Starmer as perfect, but they do see him as better than Sunak in key areas. As we mentioned in the intro, the public believe that Starmer is doing badly as leader, they view him as untrustworthy and they see him as dislikable. However, they also think that he should remain leader of the Labour Party, think it's fairly likely that he'll become Prime Minister, and think that he's competent as leader. More in Common also conducted research, which they used to create a word cloud of what people thought Starmer stood for. As we can see, nothing, don't know, not sure, and no idea are some of the most common phrases used to describe what Keir Starmer stands for. So it seems that the public are not terribly enthused by Starmer, but may simply see him as a safe pair of hands compared to Rishi Sunak, who presides over a fractured party. 
So finally, we're going to move on to the third part of the video and look at why the public may hold these views. Starmer's slow push to make the Labour Party more moderate seems to have helped in improving the reputation of the party as a whole, increasing the amount that the public trusts them on key policy areas such as the economy. This is a marked change from the policies of the previous leader, Jeremy Corbyn, who wasn't trusted in these areas. The side effect, though, is that people view these policies as more moderate and, therefore, struggle more to differentiate Starmer from Sunak and the Tories. This has the effect of leading people to think that Starmer doesn't stand for anything, and therefore not really trusting him. In ordinary circumstances, this may have proved difficult for him and his party. However, with the recent implosion of the Tory party and the subsequent lack of trust in them, voters appear to prefer a party which they believe don't stand for anything, but that they trust on major policy areas. It seems that the public are happy to go with this party, even if they don't necessarily like or trust its leader, Keir Starmer. Some political commentators have been keen to point out that Starmer is trying to emulate Tony Blair, a leader who also dragged the party back to the centre ground. Only last week, Starmer praised the achievements of Margaret Thatcher, something that Blair's new Labour government also did. However, while Starmer may well win a majority the size of Blair's, the key difference will be that Blair entered office as highly popular and well-liked. This gave Blair more political capital to enact change. With the economy still struggling and with Starmer and Labour not particularly well liked or trusted, they'll not have nearly the same political capital, and Starmer could find his polling turn around relatively quickly upon entering number 10. Now, Keir Starmer's recent comments about Margaret Thatcher is something that's been covered by 16 sources. 50% of the reporting is coming from the left and 42% is coming from the right. If you compare the headlines, you'll start to see some interesting framing emerge. On the left, you have one outlet stating, Keir Starmer praises Margaret Thatcher in bid to woo Tory voters. And on the right, you have another highlighting, Starmer hit by Labour backlash after praising Thatcher. This is all possible thanks to our sponsor, Ground News, a website and app developed by a former NASA engineer on a mission to give readers an easy, data-driven, objective way to read the news. Every story comes with a quick visual breakdown of the political bias, factuality and ownership of the sources reporting, all backed by ratings from three independent news monitoring organisations. And with their new Bias Insights feature, you can even get a breakdown of the specific differences between left and right reporting. I especially like their My News Bias feature, which allows you to track your reading habits over time. You can view your personal biases, from specific news outlets and political lean to specific topics and locality. I can even see who owns the majority of the news I consume. I know I've personally benefited enormously from ground news. I've gotten much better at spotting political bias and I've surprisingly challenged some of my own views. I highly encourage all of our viewers to give ground news a try. In fact, we're offering 30% off of their Vantage plan to all viewers. This includes unlimited access to every feature, including to my news bias. This offer is only available here, so make sure you go to ground.news forward slash TLDR or click the link in the description to get started for under $6 a month.